That would be 27 years, seven months, and eight days. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, anything else from either side? No, Your Honor, nothing further from the state. Okay. Your Honor, if it please the court, um, I understand the court's ruling um, that there is a violation. Uh, ultimately, I guess to some degree, I, while it's not uh, clearly akin to a substantive versus technical violation of probation, it is a nonviolent, non new offense kind of violation. And I would say if the court is going to violate my client, it would be more germane to treat it as a technical violation. Um, we have expressed to the court uh, different uh, thoughts and reasons for uh, the way the testimony uh, came out. Um, we don't know what effect, if any, one way good or one way bad. Uh, that has had. But in terms of his violation, uh, I would ask the court treat it more as a technical. Um, he has a uh, one grandchild uh, on the way, one that just came uh, early this year uh, with Ms. Uh, Jaquila Freeman. So the, the point is, he has been staying out of the way, he's been complying with probation. I would ask the court to maybe consider if you want to put more restrictions and make his probation much more of a, not just something he's on, but something that now has uh, more teeth to it um, because he's been working, he's been taking care of his family, he's staying out of trouble. Um, he's turned that corner. And literally, it was always our hope he wouldn't have to come in and testify. And there was a reason the state allowed this plea to go forward so that he could step away and in doing so if you recall you may have remember from his testimony by no fault of his he was a victim of a crime where he was shot multiple times and uh, had to re recover from that so we would ask the court to consider some restrictions um, first as opposed to custody um, and if you do go with custody we would ask to consider it as a technical type of violation, not a substantive violation in which um, you would be authorized to uh, uh, give him an even greater sentence. So we would leave it in the discretion of the court, but we're asking again for a non-custodial uh, revocation mm -hmm. punishment. Okay, well, um, I don't view it as a technical violation or akin to a technical violation um, considering um, the solemn oath that he took when he said that he understood every term within the plea agreement, factual acknowledgments, um, and sentencing acknowledgments, um, and understood and, in fact, orally answered that he understood um, when both asked by the prosecutor and the court at his plea hearing. Um, that a failure to abide by any of the terms would constitute a violation of the agreement, and he was notified that the entirety of his probation could be revoked. I do appreciate the fact that um, this particular violation is a nonviolent violation, um, but I also appreciate the fact that um, some of the many why this could have occurred uh, include the fact that there is just not a proper regard for um, the judicial system and the seriousness with which um, an oath in court needs to be taken. Um, I actually view this much more akin to perjury, frankly, than a technical violation. And the sentence for perjury is up to 10 years. Uh, I am going to revoke five years of Mr. Sledge's probation. And Mr. Sledge, I am sympathetic to the fact that you um, have generally stayed out of trouble in the and I want to commend you for that. Um, and I really hope that this revocation doesn't set you back. Um, but we've, we've got to take seriously the court system. So. That's the sentence of the court. Um, I find there to have been that violation. I'm revoking five years. 
and reinstating the And he will be continued balance. on probation, and, yeah, Your Honor? Um, and reinstate the balance. Your Thank Honor, you. Might I ask, is it possible for my client to turn himself in to make arrangements? Remember Gatling, I'm making this recording in regards to my dad. He's Dion Gatling. Most people know him as Cuffy. Um, but I wanted to make this recording so I can shed light on some facts. Um, my dad was set up by one of his best friends, which is Demetrius Flanori, also known as Big Meech. Um, my dad and Meech have been friends for 30 years plus. Um, I've known Meech my whole life. Um, I look at him like an uncle. Like this situation has been completely devastating on so many different levels. And there's still so many questions that aren't answered. At um, this point, I can only shed light on what I know for sure to be facts. And hopefully one day I will have the complete um, truth. But in 2011, around that time, Meech reached out to my dad in regards to creating a BMF movie. So he, Meech hooked my dad up with a woman named Tammy Cohen's. At the time, Tammy was Meech's power of attorney.